Bonjour, bonjour everyone, Max here from MHS Pod and Motion Designers Community. Before starting this quick tip video, I invite you to join our Facebook group where you will find a lot of awesome work, you will be able to share your stuff, check the latest MDC news, or even uh, see quick tips from the community on memes. It's really great to see memes in Facebook groups. I also invite you to join our YouTube channel where you have a lot of awesome content like Advanced Cinema 4D tutorials, Houdini or After Effects related content and interviews uh, with awesome artists like Ashtar, Friendly Robot, Stuzor, Mehdi, Euphoria and a lot of really really educative uh, content. You can also join us on uh, our Discord, um, really nice and helpful place. As an example, I will uh, answer live to Lala M. Lala Lem. Um, it's a really nice place to chill, interact with artists, uh, discuss, and get help um, on your project. Um, I really invite you to join here to grow as an artist. And I think we're ready to go. So today we will talk about um, camera animation in Cinema 4D, and I wanted to share a lot of um, really nice quick tips. So I will show you something really cool that I don't think um, is uh, too much shown on YouTube. So I will show you a few tips uh, that works without plugin. So we will set several camera and use a morph camera, but I will show you how we can go faster by adding a bit of um, nice movement to it and bake our keyframes and also time remap our keyframes. That sounds exciting, right? So let's start right now. The camera morph is um, a camera that you will find here and that will allow you to morph between several cameras. It means that it's really easy to animate because you just have to set several angles, focal length, and it will morph. Really, really great. So let's put one first camera here. Maybe start with a normal lens. Let's jump into it. And I think this angle is fine because it's just a simple demo. So we'll call this camera, camera one. The order will be important because when you will click here, it will take the camera from uh, the top to the bottom. So maybe let's duplicate this camera and rename it camera two. Let's simply move a little bit this camera and let's do something cool. Let's also animate the uh, the focal length to something like 75. It's nice because in addition of blending the position, scale and rotation, it can also blend the focal length. So that's something great uh, to animate. And let's put one last camera at the end. Um, something just like that. So it's really quick. Uh, don't pay attention uh, if the movement is cool or not. Um, what I want to show here is just uh, what you can do with the camera morph and other little things. So let's hide our um, camera in the view because I don't want to see them. Let's select all of them and use uh, camera morph. Now I can click here and check my camera, I will now have a slider that I, can, that I can animate with a blend value. So let's put a keyframe at zero and let's put a keyframe uh, here. And let's just delete the keyframe of this object so it stays in front of us. Nice. So here we have my camera movement. You can, of course, uh, tweak the curve by going into Window, um, Timeline, F-Curve, and you can check the movement. By default, we will only see the keyframe value, but you can also display the velocity by going into, um, I think it's in Key, and you will have Display Velocity. Okay, it's in F-Curve, Show Velocity. And here you will have a velocity curve. If you are an After Effects animator, you probably animate with speed um, or velocity curves. 
So I think it's nice in Cinema 4D to know uh, that you can activate or deactivate um, it. So now we have our movement that is uh, fun. But what I can do to make it even better? You can now create another camera. And to this camera, we will apply a tag, rigging tag, constraint. And under constraint, you will find spring. And spring will allow you to create a little bit of spring on your main camera. So it will create a more natural movement. So it's really easy. In the target, you just have to drag and drop your camera. By default here, it set the length to zero. If not, uh, you can put it here. And you will have to play with the drag value and uh, stiffness to uh, have a better movement. So let's see what it does. So you have this little spring effect. That is really great. It adds some um, natural and organic movement to it. Of course, you can change some values to have something different till you like it. We notice also another thing. Now at the beginning, it makes a strange movement. So if you want to get rid of uh, that movement, you can go at the beginning and add more keyframes. So here it will do the strange movement and then starts to work properly. So now I think I can get back to the original values and see what it does. Yeah, it's nice. It add a little bit of handshake feel. Now, um, this could be annoying for some hunters and um, I probably want to start uh, here at zero uh, once I'm happy with the movement. So in Cinema 4D, it's pretty easy to bake keyframes. You can go uh, under window, then go to dub sheet, select your camera morph, and then you will find under function bake objects. If you click on all parameters, it could bake all your keyframes. And that's really nice. So let's click OK. And now it baked all the keyframes. But as you can see here, I baked my camera morph by accident. So I will simply undo it. And my camera here doesn't display. So what I will do is simply drag my camera and I will bake this uh, camera because I don't want to bake the camera morph. I want to bake this camera. So let's go to function, bake object, all parameters. And this new camera should do the work. So let's delete all the other cameras and let's see if that worked. Yes, it baked all the keyframes. So right now I can go back to zero and I don't have any more uh, to uh, start to avoid the strange jiggle at the beginning. It will start um, nicely. And now you probably want to wonder, um, okay, it's nice, you baked everything, but if you want to go back or if you want to stretch the animation, it's pretty painful. And in a way you agree. Um, you're right, and I agree, because uh, we've lost some controls. But in Cinema 4D there is something really cool that is called the uh, time track. So let me add a new null object that I will call um, TT for time track. And I will be able to do uh, some uh, time remapping inside Cinema. So let's go again in our um, F-curve should be there. Let's go to F curve and let's drag and drop here. You just have to do one right click and you will be able to add a special track. So let's add a little bit more keyframes. Let's go to 0 to uh, 125 and okay let's right click add special track and let's add the time track. So right now I have this, um, okay, so let's click here to see it uh, full screen. I have here this new 
um, curve that will allow me to uh, play with uh, my um, animation. So here, this basically takes the keyframe and remap them here. So what I will do is also clean um, the, the frames before because I just want to start at um, zero. So maybe it's not the best to select keyframes here. Oh, I think I did deleted everything. Okay. Okay, that's that's nicer. I don't have any more um, keyframe before zero. Okay, that's just what I want. So let's go back to the F curve. We have here our time track and let's select all the keyframes here. And here you can see time track. You just have to uh, just take the time, time, time ward here. Uh, that stands for the time track and plug it here. What it will do is simply now um, use this curve for the animation. So remember our movement stopped at 90 frame, but now it will be all on our timeline, which is nice. And maybe let's do another example and show you that it will work on an even bigger uh, time scale. So let's go back again in our curves. Let's uh, go here and de-zoom a little bit. Let's take this point and let's put it here and everything should be updated. So that's a really nice way to time remap your animation even if they are already baked. And what is cool is that you can do more than that. You can also manipulate the, um, the track. So you can go here as an example and you can add another, um, let's say, okay, I will zoom a little bit. Let's say I will add a new point by hitting control and left click and I will click here to have a linear interpolation. Maybe I will put everything in uh, linear. And I can also um, add, let's say, another point here. And let's simply, you know, maybe move those two points. So this will create a sort of um, slow mode time when we are here. Or if we want to have it more obvious, I will probably create this effect um, at the beginning. I think this will help to see more uh, what's happening. So let's grab those two keyframes. Let's move like that. So our movement will end here. And during this to this time, we will only do like 2% of the animation. So it will create like a slow motion effect. Okay, really too slow, but you get the ID. So maybe let's stretch everything. So that's not the, the most visual example, but you probably um, get the, the ID. So maybe let's put one here and let's put one here. And let's move a little bit like that. And maybe let's move one like here. Okay, so you see, that's how you time remap things in um, cinema, um, even from a totally baked camera. So we saw few things. We saw camera morph. We saw that you can use the um, tag and the rigging tag uh, constraint and spring effect. We saw that you can bake keyframes in Cinema 4D to avoid like the start uh, wording at the beginning. 
and we also saw that it's easy to time remap baked things. It means that even if the movement is baked, you still have control over it using a time track. There is also other things that you can do. Um, all the things that I show you today um, is without plugins. I want to mention that there is a plugin called Gorilla Cam. I will not show it today. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, I have a bug. So um, I will not show it today, but you have the Gorilla Cam uh, plugin from Grayscale Gorilla that is uh, really nice. So, yeah. I wanted to point out the Grayscale Gorilla Cam uh, plugin that is really nice, but it's a paid plugin, and I, what what I show you was uh, free. So you can have an input camera, and you can add some overshoots, you can add some jiggle, and really nice things um, to your camera. It's really great. Um, I want also to mention two other things that I uh, didn't show, but worth mentioning. It's the motion camera. Motion camera is like a small rig where you have a null. You can also use a spline pass, a target, and you have this really nice tag where you can add some motion to your um, camera. Um, it's like uh, the vibrate tag, but you will have a little bit more uh, control and realism over it. Uh, you can animate all those things really easily with uh, some sliders. Uh, you can add dynamics and you can also chase objects. So it's really a complete rig. By the past, I already made videos on that. So I suggest that you check um, the YouTube channel to know more about that. Um, other things that could be mentioned is that you can also add uh, motion to your camera with a lot of other techniques. Like uh, you can also use delay effector and expresso to create nice things. But again, all those things are made uh, easier with uh, Grayscale Gorilla Cam. And another cool thing that uh, only few of you um, will probably know about is um, that instead, when you can, instead of using the target where you can put a target object to it, you can use instead in uh, rigging tags, the constraint aim. And under the constraint aim, you will be able to put several targets by adding several of them. And what is cool is that you will have a little bit more control. So you can choose to be in one target, but you can also blend between several targets and you can also animate those. So if you set several null as um, target object, you can animate uh, blending simply by adding some weight and just, you know, doing that. And that will animate it, which is pretty cool. Of course, you can do everything with one null that you will animate and you can uh, change here the target object and everything but I think in many cases this will allow to have just a little bit more control and in some case um, it just makes the camera movement a little bit smoother when you rotate around but not always in some case you will find the target um, easier to use especially with a line to pass and target object. So I hope you learned a lot of things today. Hope you enjoy this video. You can also follow me on my personal Instagram, MHSMAX, and on Twitter uh, at AkarMaxim. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot of things. Feel free to contact me uh, in private message on Instagram or leave a suggestion on uh, Discord just uh, to suggest uh, some tutorials for the community. Have a really nice day and see you soon.